Shen Yen is the newest character added to Genshin Impact for version 4.4, and despite accusations of simply being a Zhao support or a Jean side grade, after testing her for over 15 hours total, I can confidently say that she is much better and much more versatile than many previously believed. She's a very sizable upgrade to a number of top teams, as well as opening up a surprising amount of brand new playstyles that have never been possible before. And these playstyles are very very strong, but they do require some sufficient game knowledge to execute properly. So we're going to go over exactly how good she is, which teammates she's good for, and how to build, play, and construct rotations for her and for her teammates if you decide to get her. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Shen Yun is an Animal Catalyst off-field support healer, plunge enabler, buffer, and with the Viridescent Venera artifact, set debuffer as well. And although it might come as a shock to many, she's actually a pretty competent on-field DPS as well, which is something I personally did not expect. She's usually best played with teams where she can enable and or buff plunge damage, as plunge attacks are some of the strongest in the game. Being a catalyst, her normal attack can allow her to quickly swirl, as well as having pretty good plunge damage when used as a DPS. Her skill, in addition to being insanely good for exploration, generates 5 particles, which is a lot, and deals some alright animo damage. It also can help track enemies down as it lets her travel pretty far, so it can be situationally useful for repositioning versus mobile enemies. Her burst is the bread and butter of her kit, enabling the on-field character to jump high and use their plunge attack up to 8 times, with a duration of 16 seconds. It has a pretty high energy cost of 70, which is something that has to be considered when building around her. It also has a coordinated animo attack, which is mostly a non-factor. Her passive Bush buff plunge damage by a pretty significant amount, giving a flat damage bonus based on her attack, as well as a small crit rate buff, which is another reason why the new playstyles with her work so well. Her exploration passive slightly buff gliding speed, allowing her adding to her overworld support portfolio. But of course, what matters most is how her teams actually feel to play, and there were quite a number that I tested that felt very strong, right up there with the very strongest teams in the game. So let's get into it. couple disclaimers before we talk about the team specifically. Although I've been testing as much as I possibly could in the time that I was given with her, there will undoubtedly be a ton of optimizations that I wasn't able to make, as well as teams that I wasn't able to test or think of. I definitely recommend watching other creators as well, and keeping up to date as new developments unfold for Cloud Retainer. Additionally, the Abyss isn't that great for AoE testing, and the Perpetual Mechanical Array, which is the boss I mostly tested against, is notoriously full of RNG, so to get comparable runs, I ended up doing a lot of resets for my footage. Once we get to fight more enemies in different abysses, we'll have a much better overall feel as to how Shen Yun performs in all scenarios, but with the amount of testing that I did, I definitely think we have an, a great place to start. Starting with Raiden Team. I personally found Shen Yun to be a noticeable upgrade over Jean for this team, which is awesome because I already found Jean, or this team overall, one of Raiden's best teams. I know that National and Hyper Carry and Chevrous, I think probably Chevrous, I would argue is overall a bit better of a team than Double Hydro, or at least it was when it was just Gene. And I know the other ones also had some speedrun options that could make them a little better. For me, I personally found Jean Double Hydro the most consistent in terms of fast clear times, and Shen Yun takes it to another level. To me, this team is now on par with the C6 Chevrolet stuff, if not maybe edging it out. Whether or not it's worth it for you and for your Raiden, it really depends. There's a lot of vertical investment options for this team with Farina's weapon, Yolan's weapon, Farina constellations, Raiden constellations. So there's a lot of other things you can do. It's hard to say whether Shen Yun is a better upgrade than some of those other things, but considering the additional playstyles that Shen Yun brings, this is the option that I would personally recommend to someone. Because of the lower energy requirement that Raiden gives, Shen Yun does not have to run any sort of energy weapon on this team, she can just run the Thrilling Tails. So that gives a pretty large buff to all of Raiden's damage, which gives you more front load and just overall makes the team stronger. In addition, you can work in jump and plunge cancels into your normal combo. So you're going to do N3 and instead of dashing after your third normal attack, when you do the disappear 
disappearing thing, you can jump cancel and end with a plunge. And although the plunge isn't actually buffed by Shanyan's flat damage bonus or by the crit rate, the plunge still does a lot of damage. I wouldn't be surprised if her normal combo is still better, but for me, I found the plunge cancel was really fun, first of all, and worked a little bit better in my testing, but I didn't get to test it, you know, too, too, too much, especially considering the random nature of the perpetual mechanical array. Overall, pretty noticeable upgrade. I'm very, very thrilled as a Raiden main that it was. So if you don't have Jean, if you don't like Jean's design, or if you want an upgrade that also gives you other playstyles, this could be for you. I will say though that it isn't like a massive upgrade. The team was already very, very strong with Jean, and it's not like it's in a whole other tier with Shan Yun. So if you just want to keep using Jean and use those pulls on someone else, especially if you don't plan on using the other teams that Shan Yun can enable, then definitely sticking with Jean might still be the right idea. Moving on to Hu Tao. Now this, this is a team that feels really, really crazy. Certain teams give you a crazy feeling because the damage is just so stratospherically high. My Hu Tao was able to hit up to 130k with her plunge attack. And that's not with a pyro swirl. That's just raw vaping damage. And to be fair, my Hu Tao is well built and she was using the Staff of Homa, but because she is not under 50% HP, the Staff of Homa isn't even that huge of an upgrade over Dragon's Bane on this team. I wouldn't be surprised that with the right investment investment and the right builds that this is one of the highest single target damage teams in the entire game. I think this is going to clear Hyper Bloom. I think this is easily going to compete with Nouvellet, especially when you're looking at C0. Um, I think that this is going to be one of the strongest teams in the game. Um, again, this is my personal feeling. I'm making a pretty bold claim. I don't have calcs to back this up. This is after doing extensive testing and just looking at the damage numbers, looking at the rotation times and conceptually knowing right that where the calcs were with Gene and knowing how much better Better this feels, I can infer that this is going to be a top team. I don't think that this makes like Hu Tao better than Novelet or something. I, I still think Novelet's going to be the better character overall. I think his teams are still better overall, but the amount of damage this team pumps out is nuts. If you have Hu Tao, I highly, highly recommend getting Shen Yun. It's also way more fun than any other Hu Tao team. It's way more fun than dash canceling. It's way more fun than jump canceling. Like you are jump canceling technically, but yeah, I also think that again, I had I wasn't able to test this very much in AoE, but I think that the AoE in this team could be a noticeable improvement over other AoE Hu Tao teams, especially ones that don't include Kazua, because her plunge has a big AoE. So you all you get the dash attack, slight AoE, but then you also get the plunge. So yeah, I think this is Hu Tao's best team. I think she moves up on the tier list because of this and is now comparable comparable to Novalet and Alhaitham with this team. So time will tell whether I'm wrong or right. You know, this is a day one guide. I've only had, you know, two days you know day and a half with the, with this care with Shen Yun to actually test so but that that is my opinion for now of course we have to talk about gaming gaming is our new plunge pyro character and of course he already uses plunges in his kit his skill is a plunge attack but Shen Yun allows him to also do plunges with his normal attacks and because his nor regular normal attacks aren't that crazy this is a pretty big boost to his damage I will say however it's actually not my favorite gaming team which I was really surprised by I'll share with you my favorite gaming team but you have to subscribe because i'm releasing my gaming video tomorrow so subscribe and we'll we'll talk about gaming's actual best team in my opinion but this was one of them i would say that it is on par with my actual favorite gaming team but it's much harder to play this team like you really actually feel like you're gaming with this team like it is a high octane you know firing on all cylinders like your brain is going your fingers are moving like i feel like i'm doing like like smash brothers combos with this team and it was really really fun. I loved it a lot. Um, it's going to be a great option for your gumming. I don't recommend it before C6 or before maybe C4, just because I don't really like gumming that much before C6. I would much, much, much rather just use Bennett pre C6. Now that's not to say that you can't build up your gumming. Even if you don't have C6, you can plan to get C6 eventually, right? Get as many as you copies as you can from this banner if you want to main him, which I do think he's worth maining, by the way. I'll, I'll spoil that from the review. I think he's really strong. I think he's worth maining. I think this is only slightly worse than the Hu Tao team. I think it's really, really, really fun. One of the most fun characters in the game, actually. I was pl very pleasantly surprised. I think he's one of the better carries when he's at C6. So even if you don't have C6, you can build him up and you can plan to get C6 eventually. Pick him for your lantern rights. You can always guarantee him that way, in addition to hopefully sniping him from some banners along the way. Um, For this kind of team, there is the potential for a double swirl, okay? You can potentially 
start with Farina's skill and burst, then do Bennett's skill and burst into normal attack, then quickly switch to Shen Yun and auto attack before you're doing your skill and burst. However, doing your skill and burst there with Shen Yun wastes time with Bennett's uptime, and then you'll lose a ton of Bennett uptime for gumming, and you're barely going to get any pyro infusion off. So if you're going to try and do a double swirl, I recommend using Shen Yun's burst before using Bennett. So the actual rotation I'd recommend is Farina skill and burst, Shen Yun skill and burst, Bennett skill and burst, normal attack, Shen Yun normal attack, and then go ham with your gumming. However, even with that, I found the rotation really hard. It's really, really hard to get a double swirl. So my actual recommendation and what I've had a lot more success with is just to forget the double swirl. Do Farina skill and burst, Shen Yun skill and burst, Bennett skill and burst, and then go ham with gumming and just say, eh, not going to worry about getting a double swirl. And that's generally what I would recommend for Farina, Shen Yun, Bennett core. It's really hard to do the double swirl. There's some characters that I like it better with or that I think it can be better with, and it may turn out that this is the better thing to do and I just didn't have enough time to practice it but it is pretty mechanically intensive so for most people I just recommend ignoring it and it still does amazing amazing damage even when you ignore it um for gaming combos specifically well let's wait till tomorrow so we can move on to the next team which is Bennett carry. This was awesome. I was so shocked with how good Bennett carry was. It has all the benefits. Well, not all the benefits, but it has a lot of the benefits of the gumming one and that you're going to vaporize a lot of your plunges, but you don't have to waste Bennett uptime. You're completely giving up on a double swirl here, but you're getting damage from Yolan. So that's really good. Um, it's just going to be Farina skill and burst, Yolan burst and skill, Shen Yun skill and burst, and then you go crazy with Bennett. I have found the best success for my Bennett combos being skill into normal attack into plunge, into normal attack, into skill, into normal attack, into plunge. You kind of want a normal attack before you do your plunge so that you get a wave of Yolan's uh, swords to apply. Otherwise, you may not have enough Hydra Aura to actually vaporize. Um, but this team cleared so well. It was so good. It wasn't quite as good as Hu Tao, but it's, it felt better than the old Hu Tao teams did. Like, like you guys, you don't understand how good the Farina Yolan Shen Yun core is like it is so so freaking good and Bennett works amazingly here I gave him both the mist splitter and the iron sting even the iron sting was insane and my iron sting is only r1 and I don't even know if that's the best four star for him it's just something I tried it was so good I don't even know what to say like you guys don't understand just watch the footage I mean and you guys will get an idea of how strong these teams actually are now for the tragedy part of this of this video I don't have Zhao and this is a media server account attached directly to my account and I'm not allowed to share it with anyone and so I was not there was no possible way um, and I'm not well networked with other content creators because I'm very new so I was not able to get any information on how good she works with Zhao I'm very very sorry to your Zhao, to your Zhao mains out there but I will not pretend to know whether or not Zhao is great uh, with Shen Yun or not I think it should be I think it, obviously it seems like it should be a no-brainer especially with Farzone on this banner it seems like a no-brainer but I was just not able to test it so you know I highly recommend for waiting for Zyox's guide. I'm sure he will have a ton of information on how good it is with his with his Zhao. Granted, his Zhao is C6. I don't know um, if that will matter with his testing, but just keep an eye on other content creators and their thoughts on their testing with Zhao. I'll definitely be getting Zhao as soon as he comes back. It's just that he hasn't rerun for over a year since since I since way before I started my uh, my channel. So yeah, next time. The only characters I'm missing now are Ito, Zhao, Albedo, and Mona. So this might happen one more time with Kiori. <laughs> Ha <laughs> If Ito's running along, Ito and Albedo are running alongside Kyori, I might wait until they actually release. Anyways, we'll talk about that later. Next is our favorite Dark Knight hero, Diluc. This team is so good. It's basically the gaming team. It's a little bit worse than C6 gaming. It's like, it's definitely worse. It's a lot better than C0 gaming, but it's definitely worse than C6 gaming, which is fine. Um, I also think that it's slightly worse than using Bennett carry, but, but, but it feels so satisfying. Diluc's plan are so strong it is such a strong team like the the like yes it's a little bit worse than Bennett carry but you guys don't get how strong the teams are at a baseline like all of these teams so far are able to just one rotate the perpetual mechanical ray as long as you get the right PMA RNG but like it's actually crack it's really 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 good sorry I've been showing Bennett on the screen but it's actually Yolan that's actually the better much 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 better teammate because you just don't have enough enough hydro if you're running Bennett so you need that extra wave of Yolan so you have to weave in those normal attacks and those skills with your Diluc so try 
try and do a similar thing to Bennett, because if, if you don't keep up energy on Diluc, you're not going to have a pyro infusion for your normal attacks, which means that you won't be able to vape your plunges, which is bad. So you need to make sure that you're maybe dash canceling your plunges into using a skill, into using a normal attack, into doing a plunge, something like that. We'll have to wait and see the Diluc mains to see the actual best combos. But even me, who barely has played Diluc before, like this is actually a team that Diluc is good in. In about a week or maybe less, I'll be making a full Diluc guide. So I'll be playing him a lot more and testing him a lot more and I'll be able to give you his exact updated combos as to what's best. But for now, this is amazing. Highly recommended if you want to play if you want to play Diluc and actually feel like a badass. This is awesome. First of all, it's way more badass than any other team he's had, but and it also works the best. So super pog. Uh, next, I want to talk about the Shen Yun carry team. This is surprisingly awesome. Really, really good. Now, to be fair, she's using probably the three best buffers in the entire game. Farina, Farazan, C6, and Bennett. So, you know, she's obviously being carried here. Um, but the reality is it performs very, very similarly to Wanderer. And I use Shen Yun with the Skyward Atlas on this team, as well as her signature. It was basically negligible in terms of their power. And I used Wanderer on the exact same, well, not the exact same artifact set, because my Desert Pavilion set is slightly better because he's overcapping on crit rate with my uh, Maria Chasse. But I have a very good Desert Pavilion set. I was using Risley's weapon, which is one of his best weapons. I also used Nouvellet's weapon to try and mitigate the crit rate stuff. And yes, Wanderer was out DPSing Shen Yun team-wide overall, but it was really pretty close. Um, I wouldn't say it's insane, right? It, Wanderer is definitely going to be better. Zhao is definitely going to be better. But if you don't, if you want to use her as a hyper carry, or if you just want an animal hyper carry, this is more than competent. Plus, it's easier to play and maintain because she is a healer. So you're keeping up with Freena's stocks very well, where you all know how scuffed this team is with Wanderer, um, because it's hard to keep up the stacks. So really, really big fan. And yeah, I'm not saying that she's broken as a carry or anything like that. But she if you want to do it, it's actually good. Like it's not co at all. Next is something I've been cooking. Haha, <laughs> Jello has been cooking. This is dual vision Kazuha. <laughs> You build him on Mario Chasse with attack sands and attack goblet, and he deals both animo and pyro damage from your plunge. This is a team where you do want to get a double swirl on because uh, you're going to be vaping much more consistently because you're able to infuse Kazuo's burst with hydro. You it's like a bit meme -y. like it isn't as good as using Bennett as a carry, and obviously you're wasting your Kazuo slot. It's for those people who want to d use DPS Kazuo. I think if you have C1 Kazuo, it could be even better. I don't know how much better it'd really be. Um, the other thing that I'm interested for this team in particular is its AoE potential because you're using on-field Kazuha, so you're going to be getting more procs of his E skill than usual, even if you're not C1, even if you're not using Sacrificial Sword. Um, his, he, because he's on-field, his energy requirements are lower, and you also don't need your burst up. Like, it does good damage, of course, but, and, and I didn't, like, try and min-max, so, you know, maybe Sacrificial Sword is good, but I feel like it's probably too much ER. You're better off just going a DPS weapon, but I thought it was super, super fun, really funny. It, it does take a bit of practice to get used to. So the rotation is you want to start with Farina, skill, then burst, then use Kazuo's burst. I started with Kazuo's burst. That's kind of a waste of uptime. No real reason to do that. But yeah, Farina, skill and burst, Kazuo burst, Shen Yun, skill and burst, Bennett, skill, burst, normal attack, Shen Yun, normal attack, and then go to town with Kazuo. Or you can watch what I did. Really fun team. Definitely recommend trying it out if you have the characters and the artifact. Next is Yaimiko Aggravate. I don't think I like it more than regular Yaimiko Aggravate. I think that it's possible that it does have have similar damage, but I think losing the grouping from Kazuha in AoE makes it not really worth it. Better than Jean, for sure. Um, I didn't have as much trouble getting Swirls as I expected. Shen Yun is easier to get Swirls with than, I don't know if it's easier than Kazuha, but it was definitely easy enough. It's something you can do if you don't have Kazuha right now, but it's not something I'd specifically try and recommend. Um, Klee. Klee actually gets some vapes in this team because you're not doing as many um, normal attacks and charge attacks as you normally would. You actually get some vapes. It's, again, I don't think it's better than Klee's other variants by any stretch of the imagination. I think Farina reverse vape or forward vape is really, really good these days, and this is most likely just worse, but it does work, and it's pretty fun. Calling all Candice mains. This is it. DPS Candice is real, and it can hurt you. Now, it's not, like, incredible, but it is good. 
Candice infuses herself and she has good normal attack multipliers. So her uh, plunge attack multipliers. So her plunges actually do good damage. Yes, she's being carried by the super broken core, but unlike something like Hyper Bloom, she's actually doing damage. You're actually getting, you know, 60, 70 K plunges. Once again, Mari Shisei artifact set, um, attack sands, hydro goblet. I was using staff of Homa, you know, definitely something I'm going to be including on my Candice videos in the future. It was really actually surprisingly competent. Definitely not on the same level as any of the characters I've showed before, but still good. DPS Sing Cho, once again, you go attack Goblet, attack Sans, so that he does both pyro and hydro damage. His plunge multipliers are really good. He's getting his own uh, vapes and reverse vapes. Actually, you might be able to go maybe EM, EM Sans, attack Goblet. Uh, you could probably actually do better than what I did. You might be able to actually get a double swirl with this team as well. I didn't get to like extensively, extensively test it, but it worked solidly. And I think it has the potential to be even better. It's super funny, that's for sure. DPS Shenha, I first tried this with cryo so i did chongyun farina <clears throat> shenha but the uh, there's just so much uptime issues there's issues getting a cryo swirl <clears throat> i was not a fan um this was not very good um i'm not gonna lie it's enough to clear it's enough to 36 star <clears throat> but it's not very good so I, I don't recommend doing it but yeah it's it's just kind of it's just kind of a waste the, the, i know it's like tempting to just say and i'm a lot of creators may say oh you just use this core and then you can use anyone in the last slot the reality is that's just kind of cope it's just it feels just way Way better just to put Sing Cho or Yalan in this last slot or something like do something like this and then use Bennett plunge right it's just not worth plunging with someone else other than Bennett if you're already going to be using Bennett on the team it just feels so so much worse out of the teams I, re I I showed I recommend all of those but this is something I don't the other one I tried was Ayaka this was really 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 funny because its first rotation is like mad lad damage it's really really good and just like one rotates the PMA like no questions asked no problem once again attack sans maybe yeah em sans attack attack goblet but no it's you're doing again pyro and cryo damage you're vape you're, you're vaping and melting off of her burst it's hilarious but it's an energy black hole so the next you're, you're completely out of energy for the next rotation and may, maybe there's a way to make it work but I, I don't i don't recommend it and then i also want to talk i tried a bunch of risley variants i tried them with shangling i tried them with the other teams i've shown i didn't really like any of them i tried them with mono cryo i tried them with shenha maybe Maybe I'm just bad at Risley, but I didn't find it performed very, very well. I, don't, I think it was some of the worst performing. I think I know it was sheeted to do pretty good, and his plunge mul multipliers are pretty good. I found the infusion didn't last long enough at all. Um, sorry, not the infusion. The Bennett uptime didn't last long enough to really get off his his combo. Very many of his combos consistently, and just overall, I highly don't recommend it over really any of his other teams. So yeah. And then I finally wanted to just give a visual of all the teams I tested and kind of how they felt. I put all of these guys here in amazing. Um, I feel like, again, I didn't test Zhao, but we're all pretty sure how that's going to go. But these four for sure, really, really good. I think Hu Tao is maybe even potentially on another level above the rest. Raiden, really amazing. I feel like I could optimize with Raiden more as well. I feel like I had even too much ER on all my characters, so I could go for more damage on all of them. Gaming, really good. Bennett, really good. Zhao. D Luke, just a step below shenyun carry just a step below um these guys they're they're good teams but it's sort of just a waste it's like good but wasteful <laughs> something like that i don't know and then these ones were good enough to be cool i think i don't know i'm gonna put shenha down here i don't i don't know it's, it's, it's like it like clears but like eh. i think candace and sing cho are cool ayaka is lmao didn't like the other ones i want to talk about is so i would have man i would have loved to test all of them right but it takes so many resources to level up normal attacks on characters that you don't already have well invested but keep an eye out for hazo man like i really think that dps hazo with plunge could make him way 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 better of a character because he's gonna be procking his like when you're procking swirls um on field you're gonna stack up your declension stacks and it's just way more damage than using normal attacks or charge attacks to to build up those swirls so you can do plunge to build up those swirls then launch your skill then do plunge then launch your skill like way way better than regular dps hazo i think it 
should be a big buff. Um, but let me know um, uh, if you've tested it. I'd love to hear. Shang Lang has good plunge multipliers. And you, uh, if you're using Shang Lang with Bennett, you want to use her last in the rotation anyways to snapshot her burst. So I feel like a Farina Shang Lang Bennett team could be good. Maybe you're building Farina on EM to forward vape. I'm not sure. I feel like it, it should be good, but I have I have no idea. Um, I think Yanfei should be similar-ish to Klee. Her plunge multipliers aren't as good, but she doesn't apply as much pyro, so maybe she can more consistently vape stuff. I'm not sure. Let me know. Razor has really good plunge multipliers. He's probably good. You can again run dual attack to do some electro and pyro. Maybe there's other funky stuff you can do with it. And then I didn't test these, but I don't expect them to be particularly good. I think Chong Yun has the most potential. Yeah, I think Chong Yun has actually potential. Chong Yun should be good because you can use Chen He, Farina, Shen Yun, you can actually plunge with Chong Yun and you shouldn't run into the uptime issues that plunging with Shen He does. So this should actually be good. Maybe it's even great. I think Chong Yun is probably saved by, by Shen Yun um, as well. I just don't have his multipliers lined up, but I will. I will get him. I will get his, his normal attacks up so I can test it, but let me know if in the comments if it's worth. I, it should be his best team. Like there's no way it's not his best team, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think dual scaling Eula should be pretty hilarious. Pyro, okay, attack, attack, goblet, and then use your, I don't know. Can you, can you use plunge attacks to, to stack up her burst? If you can, that would be hilarious. No, when Eula's own normal attack, elemental skill, and elemental burst damage opponents, they will charge the light pulse. That is too bad, man. If you could use plunge attacks to charge up her burst, it might save Eula. That is, that is a shame. That's a shame, bro. I don't think it will be very good. I, I don't think Day will be very good. I think you just lose too much uptime. It, like, sure, it can clear, but maybe it'll be your best teammate as a carry, but I don't even know about that. But let me know if I'm wrong about any of these. If you've tested any of them, they're actually better. If I've missed any, let me know. I'll update the pin comment with anything I missed. And obviously, I'll be playing a lot more Shen Yun because I think she's one of the most fun and cool characters in the game. Look at all the wacky Jack teams that I got to try. And they the all these teams can 36 stars even the ones that I didn't like. And basically the great and above are like amazing. Like they feel amazing, even D. Luke. And the good is an easy, even the cool, it's an easy 36 star. All of these are an easy, especially from Candace and above, easy 36 star. So that's what I think. I also did want to talk about what do you do if you don't have Farina? Every single team I've showcased has had Farina, Farina in it. Is she any good or is she useless without Farina? Well, it's kind of good news, bad news. Like obviously they sit Farina and she Shen Yun synergized so, so well together. Shen Yun was made with Farina in mind. So she is balanced around Farina. Like if she didn't need Farina to do what these teams do, she would be broken SSSSS plus tier. She was balanced around you having Farina. So I don't really recommend getting her if you don't plan on ever getting Farina. If you don't have Farina right now, there's still stuff that you can do with her. I tried this Hu Tao with double hydro with Shan Yun. It's still better than using double hydro with Zhongli or double hydro with Jean or something like that. This is still a really, really, really good team and cleared amazingly cleared PMA in under a minute. So it was still really, really good. Good, but definitely not that broken SSS plus tier as it is with Farina. I think even if you're even if you're a D Luke main and you didn't pick up Farina, like this is still gonna be probably his best team, and then you can just get Farina down the road. But definitely, like you're sort of wasting her by not if you don't have Farina. And we'll talk about how that affects her overall pull value a bit later on. Now to build her. I have her level 90. I don't think you necessarily need level 90, but I think eventually because the more attack you have, the more buffs she's giving. So you're gonna be doing some swirl damage as well. I think it's worth it. It's not as high priority as a lot of things, but I think it's probably worth 90-ing. If you're using her with Raiden, you can get away with not 90-ing because Raiden doesn't use her buff. So that's a thought, I guess. Oh yeah, quick tip for DPS, Shanyun. You wanna use your burst before you skill so that it can be boosted. Um, Leveling up her skill only gives damage. So unless you're doing damage with her, you could just leave her skill unleveled. And same with normal attack, you can, I, I just, level them up real high for DPS. Like it does solid damage. So it's kind of like you might as well level up her skill because you're going to be using it. So you might as well get some damage out of it, but it's definitely much better to level up her burst because her burst is what gives healing. I should have talked about this in the pros and cons section, but her burst healing is a lot. Like it feels like Farina's HP drain is not even there. You have that initial healing and then the continuous healing. It is a ton. Like regardless of whether I was on Thrilling Tales or whether I was on Oathsworn Eye or 
or her signature or Skyward Atlas, she was healing so much. I never had a problem with her healing. So yeah, I don't think any of my teammates ever died or even, oh, okay, they died. Gaming died sometimes because he drains his own HP. I recommend, I remember gaming died some, sometimes. But yeah, focus your talent levels on the burst. For weapons, obviously her signature is best in slot. It gives her base attack. It gives her attack. It gives, it buffs your on-field plunging character 28% damage bonus a really solid buff because you're using her with Farina it does diminish the value of that buff a little bit but it's still a really really powerful buff and she restores energy from it so it's just all in all amazing weapon but you don't have to go for this especially if you do have the Oathsworn Eye from a while ago giving you high base attack attack percent and increasing energy recharge after using elemental skill which is when you catch your five particles this is a really 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 good free to play weapon I don't think you need the five star weapon like this is plenty even if you don't have this like she has so much healing like it's not so bad if you have to use favonius and it's nice that she can give energy to your team which should be useful i do feel bad if you don't have this if you do have skyward atlas this is also a great choice you'll just have to really focus on building attack per or building energy recharge substats because she will be lacking energy recharge from this i think it's doable i think you can get there it's just going to be challenging and kind of similarly if you're using the favonius codex you'll really want to focus on attack percent substats to get that attack up to compensate for like kind of over capping on energy recharge i don't recommend prototype amber kind of low on the stat line for attack but i mean i guess it's okay if you have to hakushin's probably okay in like raiden but in raiden you just really want to use thrilling tales and that's one of her other better options if on teams that can get away with it like Zhao teams or raiden teams thrilling tales is a very good option 48 percent attack buff absolutely huge and occurring once every 20 seconds is perfect for the rotation if other people have really good weapon options i'll pin them in the comments but those are the ones that stand out to me for now for artifacts you're almost always want to go with vv there's really never any reason not to if you're using her as a DPS, you can go with the Mari Shise Hunter because you'll be using her with, with Farina. Most of the time, you'll be using her with Farina. So since you are mostly using her with Farina, pretty much your, your on-field DPS is almost always going to be using the Mari Shise Hunter artifact set. And because they'll often be infusing, I mentioned this in the team section, but because, but, if you missed that, maybe go watch it again because it's it's important to keep in mind, is your character doing pyro damage? Are they doing their other elemental damage? If they're doing both, then you generally wanna stay away from an elemental damage bonus goblet and you'll wanna go for an attack goblet or an EM goblet if they're doing lots of reactions. But I gave most of my team building um, character tips in the team section, so go check that out. But for Shanyan herself, generally energy recharge sands. Um, you could, if you're doing Favonius Codex, you can go attack percent sands, potentially. Maybe you need both. Um, depending on depends on your substats depends on the team it's critically important that she burst every rotation so you might just have to test it out and make sure through testing that you have enough i never struggled to get her burst up using o sworn eye plus energy recharge sands um, i never struggled with ride in teams using thrilling tales with energy recharge sands so i generally think that if you do have oath sworn eye and energy recharge sands you shouldn't have a problem i do have a lot of er on this piece no er on this piece some er on this piece no er on this piece so your mileage may vary let me know how much er you find to need i end up with 178 i found again i found this more than enough except for like on energy black hole teams that really don't create any, any energy but mostly mostly it was totally fine um, i generally recommend attack percent goblet she wants as much attack as possible and she does good damage um, if you happen to build damage on her it's not so bad she does pretty decent damage with her skill and then attack percent circlet and you're really looking for for attack percent and er sub substats on your flower and feather if you're going favonius maybe you want crit obviously you want crit rate as much as possible maybe you even run a crit rate circlet but then you're really losing a lot of attack so pretty simple for artifacts if you're using her on a Zhao team you can go with the new Promised Dream of Days Past artifact set or the Ocean Hue Clam. Again, same same stats, you know, attack percent is the most important. I personally don't know if I'll ever, like I'm sure when I get Zhao, I'll put her on a different set, but VV is just, you know, VV is just, is so good that it's pretty much never worth running anything but. For vertical investments, so 
I'll talk about this more in the overworld section. Man, she is so fun in the overworld. So her skill gaining an additional charge. I don't know how useful this is going to be outside of her DPS teams. Like sure, this could reduce her energy, but then it increases her field time. So I feel like this is mostly just an exploration, exploration constellation. And then it will help her when she's running a DPS for sure. And outside of that, I don't really see using it because her skill takes a long time to use. So I don't see it really worth being used in a rotation, but maybe I'm wrong. Her C2 increases increases her attack gives increased plunge damage bonus so definitely it's going to be a it's going to be a good constellation to increase your on fielder um, I don't know exactly what percentage increase this is going to be. So I would definitely wait to pull constellations until you really hear from that. And then I think like C3 is not, not, not that useful. Like again, okay for when you're using her as a DPS. Um, C4 extra healing doesn't seem that useful. C5, um, not, not that good. And then I think this one is, yeah, you can just spam her skill. So she just becomes like an actually pretty cracked on field DPS. So I think overall, this is a character that you get at C0 and just enjoy maybe you get her c1 for exploration or maybe you get her signature i think her signature is definitely more valuable than her c1 if you're using her as like her her intended role but i may get her i may personally get her c1 just for added comfort in the overworld because i spend a lot of time in the genshin overworld and so that's that's a big deal to me is having that exploration i'll talk about it later in the overworld section the best constellations you could go for pairing with shan yun is definitely farina like farina's constellations are cracked so if you're thinking about vertical investing onto your team that has Shen Yun, go for Farina over Shen Yun. That is the most important thing. Way more important than her signature, way more important um, than her constellate her own constellations. That's what you should be doing for power. So versus Jean, what do I think about her versus Jean? Overall, I mean, it's very clear she is the better character. Um, Jean healing and having VV combined with Farina is already really, really good. And Shan Yun allowing new characters to use much more powerful attacks than they normally do is even better. So depending on what characters you're using, she may be way better than Jean. She may be a side grade to Jean. I don't think there's ever a situation where she's a downgrade to Jean. So if you don't have Jean and you want to use a, a VV character with Farina, I, she's pretty much a must pull. And for her overall account value, it really, really depends. So it depends on, it's basically, I think about it like a flow chart like this. Number one, do you have Farina? Number two, is your Farina locked to your Novalette? As long as the answer to those questions is yes and no. So yes, you have Farina and no, she's not locked to Novalette. Shen Yun is like the best character you could pretty much possibly get on your account in terms of account value. And especially if you can scrunch together a Yalan as well, like it is just such a broken core. I think it is my favorite core in the game. Once you get above like minimal investment, this is pro like this core is going to be stronger than Hyper Bloom. Like this is another like, man, it's it's crazy. And obviously, if you have any of those characters that I showed before, um, I think that the thing that prevents her from becoming like a total must pull is I know a lot of people do have Novalette. And if you have Novalette and you're using Novalette with Farina, well then Shen Yun is going to be, it's going to be tough for her to work. So I think that Novalette is like the thing that keeps her from being super, super, super top tier because not only do they not have synergy together, only one of them can have Farina. Now Novalette can always use something else, right? You can run Novalette Hyper Bloom or something else, which is, which is great. So it's not like it negates you from getting Shen Yun at all. Novalette doesn't need Farina to function, but that's like what kind of is, makes her a bit of a lower pull. I wouldn't agree with the saying that if you have Jean, you don't need Shen Yun. If you don't play, like, if you don't play any of these characters, right? If you don't play Hu Tao, Raiden, and you don't, you know, these characters, and none of the, none of her teams look interesting to you, like, to me, it, it's like, I have, I don't want to compare her to Jean really as much as I was before, because previously it was like, oh, she's like Jean. But now it's like, the teams just feel totally different, and they're not generally teams that you can run with Jean. So it's sort of like, do you want to run these cool teams? or not and if you do you have to get her and if you don't then you shouldn't get her she's definitely not like a must pull character but i do think she is a good pull i think she enables a lot of teams and i would put her power level like the very top of a tier maybe she even makes it into s tier i'm not sure it kind of it's kind of the novelette thing that that i don't know maybe she may like i don't know i, I could see her being an s tier but i could see her staying at the very top of a tier as well she's a really 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 good character and i don't know about calling her niche like is a character that that enables brand new really good play styles like for all of these for for like can for like Candace in above and like I don't, this one is not you know they're kind of they're kind of weird but all of these characters get 
really unique and cool play styles and potentially more that are really, really good that just don't exist without Shen Yun. I wouldn't call it niche personally. And I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure there's others that work as well. And the ones that I took away work as well. It's just that they're kind of a bit of a downgrade, more of a downgrade. So it's like, yes, she doesn't work with everyone, but enabling best in slot compositions for this many characters, I think that's pretty darn cool and just unique and super fun. And that's what's fun about Genshin to me is trying out these unique things. So if you like new, cool, unique stuff, then I definitely think she's for you. But if these teams don't look interesting to you, then I think she's a safe skip, right? She's unless you really unless unless you love D Luke, in which case get over yourself. For future prospects, I think she has a ton of future prospect potential. And she really enables like the jank creative team building that I think a lot some people anyways miss in Genshin Impact. Like we've had Hyper Bloom and so for so long it's been so obvious what the best teams are. And now I feel like with Shen Yun, you can be a lot more creative than you sort of could before. And I think that every new character is that it's like, can this character plunge? Can they work with Shen Yun? Can they get infused by Bennett? Can they whatever? Um, I guess I really should have talked a lot more about C6 Bennett. I'll put a I'll put a timestamp here as well. But like C6 Bennett, there's a very strong positive reason to C6 your Bennett now and very, very few negative reasons. I think it's a fantastic time to C6 your Bennett. If you've been on hold, like if you get Shen Yun, like DPS Bennett, like which one of these teams use C6 Bennett? Like the Kazwa thing and the Bennett thing and the gaming thing and the D-Luke thing. Uh, D-Luke does it. I like D-Luke double hydro better. Bennett was not as, I didn't like as much. But I think it's a pretty good time. to. See. I think the pros to C6ing Bennett are now a lot lot higher than Nazi 6 him if you do have Shen Yun. And in the future, who knows who else we get that can benefit from that. And especially with Farina providing so much damage bonus, like it's such a cool, it's such a cool complimentary thing that she provides so much damage bonus that you can run attack goblet or EM goblet and you don't have to run an elemental damage bonus goblet and you can do double element damage. I love it. It's, it's so, it's so cool. And I'm very excited to see who in the future could work with Shen Yun because you just never know what other characters in the future may also get a buff or what other jank old teams that we we find out that we didn't think of before. So finally for overworld and exploration. So a couple things. You can go more, you can you can really control her as you're using her skill. Like I thought it was gonna send at a particular angle, but like I can go like in this in this circle, right? Like you can I, I thought it was gonna be like kind of a straight and narrow thing, but you can go in a circle. You can hold forward and go really far forward. You can plunge at the end. If there's an enemy, you target them and even go further in a different direction. You can use all three skills in quick succession. Normally when you're fighting enemies and you're looking for good clear times, you're just going to be using your skill once and then plunging immediately. That's how you can get the fastest skill particles. But it's not only good for vertical, for horizontal exploration, it's also good for vertical exploration. You can jump and go and get and climb up cliffs pretty high. I'll go to a higher cliff to show you. Like if we jump, 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 like she gets pretty darn high up and it's pretty darn awesome. I really, really like her for vertical exploration. Also horizontal above cliffs, you can go like this and then you can even glide at the end and land over here. So I really, really like her for that kind of traversal like i you go jump 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 wait you can wait hold on you can jump and then glide and then jump again okay so you can't jump so you can't jump and glide you can't but once you press your skill you can start gliding, then press your skill again, then start gliding again, then press your skill again. That's really, really cool. Wow. And then she also increases gliding speed. So you're gliding just a little bit faster than normal. That That's really, really cool. I like this so much. So yeah, I'm really, really impressed by how, how they did this. It feels very smooth and very fun to play. I like her purse. I know people love Wanderer for exploration. I like her better than Wanderer personally. I find Wanderer, it just, his stuff doesn't last quite long enough to be properly satisfying to play and I think her vertical is arguably well that one wasn't that great but it's arguably better or almost as good as Wanderer because his vertical isn't really all that great and her horizontal is really really good and it's co she's comparable to Yolan I mean Yolan's further right let's see let's see how far Yolan goes we start here Yolan gets all the way to here right here and then we'll go back to the edge Shen Yun can go to here so it's about two-thirds two-thirds of the way that Yolan goes maybe a bit maybe a bit 
bit less, right around there. And but the speed might be faster, maybe about the same. So I think Shenyun is replacing Bennett on my overworld team as my healer, and along with Yolan, and then and then having Kazuha, and then one other character uh, to complete my overworld team. So I'm really excited. Let me know if you have any thoughts. Let me go know if you're getting her, how your pulls went, and, and make sure you subscribe for the gaming uh, video tomorrow. Take care. Bye for now.